Hello, my name is Catherine Fletcher and I'm a historian of early modern Britain and Europe based at the University of Sheffield. I was an advisor to the set team on Wolf Hall and over the next few minutes I'm going to take you through some of the sources that were used to get the look of Tudor ceremony right. Let's take Anne Boleyn's coronation as an example. These days there are a lot of sources available on the internet to explore Tudor history and you can have a go at doing this yourself. At British History Online we can look through many of Henry's papers. If I browse down here to 1533, which is the year of Anne Boleyn's coronation, flick to the end of May and scroll down a bit to the 31st, here we go, we've got the coronation of Anne Boleyn. Now the trouble with this particular event is that we've got very differing accounts. So, for example, we've got one from the French ambassador here who's pretty positive about Anne as queen. He describes her mounted upon a platform before the great altar covered with red cloth. The place where she was seated, which was elevated on two steps, was covered with tapestry. Behind her were many ladies, duchesses and countesses, attired in scarlet, in cloaks furred with ermines, such as are usually worn by duchesses and countesses, and in bonnets. But in contrast, the imperial ambassador, who was an ally of Catherine of Aragon, used his description of the coronation to put the knife into the new queen. The crown became her very ill, and a wart disfigured her very much. She wore a violet velvet mantle with a high ruff of gold thread and pearls, which concealed a swelling she has. So in the course of putting these events on screen, the filmmakers had to decide what would be the right balance between the different sources. Of course, there are visual images that can help too. This is a seating plan for Anne Boleyn's coronation, and we can see we've got the Queen herself underneath the cloth of state, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and then what's really interesting, if you turn it on its side, we have who is meant to sit at each table. Now, Tudor handwriting is a bit of a challenge, but we've got at this table the Mayor of London and his brethren, the Aldermen, Duchesses, Marquesses, and Countesses over here the Lord Chancellor, bishops, the barons. So this copy of a 1512 processional roll can help us think about the type of ceremonial dress that people might have been wearing and also about some of the objects. For example, um, here we've got the Archbishop of Canterbury and we see his mitre, his crozier. Behind him we've got somebody with a chain of office here, another chain of office there a lovely tabard, these fur-trimmed red gowns, and over here we've got a sword of state. Of course, if we want to get a lot closer up with some of these objects, we can turn to portrait evidence. Holbein's wonderful portrait of Archbishop William Warham gives us lots of details about the types of ecclesiastical objects we might have seen in the Tudor period. So, We've got this crucifix here and we actually had quite a discussion about whether feet should be side by side on a crucifix or crossed over. Um, we've got a pearl trimmed mitre there. We've got this marvellous fabric down here, the fur around the costume and in the backdrop, something you might have seen on Wolf Hall, these lovely green hangings. But to get a sense of how these objects and costumes fitted together on a bigger scale, we're back to the ceremonial books. Another image that's very useful for establishing appropriate ceremonial dress is this one of Henry VIII opening Parliament in the 1520s. So here we've got the king in his ceremonial robes, cloth of state behind him. We've got three bishops here and we can tell this is Cardinal Wolsey in the middle because it's got his cardinal's hat over him. Cross bearers just behind them. And then if we come down here, um, a sword of state there. We've got lords seated on wool sacks. We've got bishops in their mitres down there. And we've also got a lovely indication of the type of floor covering and of these clerks writing away in the middle. What we don't have though, is an image of Anne Boleyn's coronation itself. So recreating that really is a piece of detective work, putting together lots of little details from all these different sources to come up with a look that can work for television.